Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, CoBuzz Live on Thursdays. My name is David Solomon. I'm uh, the CoBuzz Chief High Res Music Evangelist, and uh, I'd like to welcome you all. Uh, welcome you all here today. Uh, just to tell you a little about CoBuzz, we've got over 60 million songs now. That's up from 40 million when we first started, uh, with well over uh, 2 million in uh, full high res and 24 bit up to 24192. Uh, we do have a download store. We encourage all of our uh, fans and music lovers to visit the down, download store mainly because hey it helps uh, support the artists uh, better than anything else that uh, better than anything else that we've got at this point but we we encourage you to support your artists any way you possibly can uh, whether it be uh, you know going to their website and buying t-shirts or buying their albums or CDs or or buying downloads from Cobuzz we've got a great sale going on now until the end of the month uh, with uh, with uh, music going up to uh, up to 80% off. So there's some really, really good deals um, for you there. Uh, our plan uh, in high res uh, starts at about $15 per month. And uh, if you happen to have a family, we do have a family plan that's uh, that's only twenty four ninety nine a month. We uh, we just uh, we just launched that not long ago, just a few weeks ago, uh, because everybody was going. Like, when are you guys going to have a family plan? I've got my you know I've got my wife and kids, or I've got my spouse and kids on on Spotify, and and I'd like to turn them on to Coba. So we finally got that uh, we finally got that taken care of. So that's up to six people. So that's like under five per five dollars a person okay before we get uh, before we bring on our guests from martin logan i'd like to thank uh, a few of our uh the people that helped put the show together we've got dan matka our managing director producing the show today uh we will try to get to all of your questions but i'm quite sure that we won't be able to so if we don't happen to get to your questions we'll uh, uh myself russell and andrew will go back uh, after the show is over and uh we'll uh we'll make sure that we uh we we, we get those there so so, guys, hello. How are you doing? Fantastic. Yep, right here. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Absolutely. we're Wonderful excited to be here. Well, yeah. here, but also here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've known each other for, uh, for 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 quite some time, and unlike uh, unlike a lot of the products or companies that we that we talk about, um, I actually own martin logan speakers and 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 just love them we uh really before we get get started i just want to let folks know what what i'm using at home so uh if you guys could pull up the um the little office shot this is uh this is my system and it's super super unconventional uh, but this is my desktop system. I listen to it more than anything else in my house, although I do have another really nice icon system downstairs. But when you have a pair of speakers like this that are, as you can tell by the picture, they're about, I don't know, maybe a meter. Each speaker is maybe a meter from my head um, and about 300 watts driving the panels with a four subwoofers on the bottom with 800 watts uh, uh, per pair of those it is one heck of an experience I'll, I'll often tell people that uh with my system at home uh if there's a fly in the studio i know what microphone it's it's at it's the most resolute system that i've ever had in my life and i am just enamored with it this is a picture when we were we work with martin logan a lot they're fantastic partners of ours this was uh, at the new york show i believe in 2019 uh, and these are this is a big pair of the the uh, um, the Martin Logan monoliths. We'll talk a little bit about those in in just a little bit. I, I think that's what is that what those are, guys? Ne Neolith. Ne Neolith. I'm sorry, they're the the Neolith. I, I always get that confused. But the big Neolith speakers, and as you could tell, they're 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 just absolutely huge, and they fill a room. That was the day that we uh, that we announced that we were going to go to. I th um, thinking if that was the day we announced that we were going live no that was the day i think we announced that we were going to the 15 dollar price point um but we had a we had a super time what a great sound of pair pair of speakers these things are but really everything that you guys do is just just amazing um so tell me uh guys uh 
tell me a little bit about what you do with the company and we'll, we'll get into a little bit of the, the, the technology of the speakers. Uh, Russell, why don't you start? There we go. <laughs> or Andrew. Uh, or Andrew. Yeah, there you go. Well, actually I have been with Martin Logan now for, uh, going on, we're on 12 years. And, uh, you know, I, I tell you, I pinch myself every day that I wake up because I, I mean, I'm listening to music, I'm selling speakers and, and I feel like I'm selling the best speakers in the world. And, uh, <clears throat> and I have relationships with really the top retailers, dealers, uh, in, in the nation. Uh, and you know, and that's a direct link, not only to that dealer, but also a direct link to, to our customers. So I get to do that on a, on a, on a, <clears throat> a regular basis every single day. In addition to that, I have, uh, I have really been afforded the opportunity to work with a lot of these artists that make music. And, uh, it's, it, it, it's something that's, that we develop over a, a long period of time or, uh, over the last 11 years, but it's so phenomenal to be able to <clears throat> be in my position to be able to actually uh, sell the, what I feel is the best speakers in the world, be able to listen to the best speakers in the world, present them to, you know, some of the artists who, in my opinion, make some of the best music in the world. And, you know, to be in conversations about that on a, on a regular basis, I pinch myself every single day. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that I should have a title. I should, my title should be more uh, just the, the ambassador of fun. You know, so uh, maybe I'll adopt that today. <laughs> I've known Russell for I'm <clears throat> not too many years to even count. I think it's been about three decades now, hasn't it? Maybe a little more. It has, at least. Russell and I used to, <clears throat> to work together, and um, I fell in love with this guy the, the minute that I, I think I hired you, actually, didn't I? You, you actually did. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. And, 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 uh, just fell in love with Russell when, when I met him and he has had just a really, really neat career since our old days at, at high five buys. Um, you oh, went man. to, I'm trying to think of where you went to after high five buys. Oh, it's, it you know, I, <clears throat> what's that? Was it Polk? Well, I worked for, uh, actually I worked for a, a company called, uh, perpetual technologies for a while. Um, and we did a DNA converters uh, early on on the internet. How about that? <clears throat> How about that for a business uh, proposition here? <laughs> DNA converters, you know, direct to consumer. Um, and then, of course, I worked for Polk uh, prior to coming to work for uh, for Martin Logan, and I was here for for ten years. And uh, decided it was time to upgrade my speakers. So I, <laughs> uh, well, I think you did that. Something there's. You know, just uh, I, I certainly love Martin Logan, but uh, had a great time there as well. Russell's a musician as well. Uh, we share that in common. Uh, and I, you've got a little pair of the motion speakers right behind you, don't you? I do. Actually, you have the uh, motion the, the 35s. Those are fantastic. You know, I've got a pair of the bit the, the uh, uh, floor standards, the uh, motion 40s. And I they are fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little more about those as well. Streaming amplifier. And uh, <clears throat> obviously, as you can see here, when, when I record a little bit of music and I want to hear what it's going to sound like, uh, you know, on a system, that's what I do. So I do the same thing with this uh, little yeah. setup here. Of course, I've got a little DAW on my computer. Uh, and when I finish at night, sometimes I just, you know, hang out because the place is so much fun. And I could put down some tracks and, you know, just still have a great time in my office. I, I actually like working at home. I've done it really pretty much my whole life, but now since there's no traveling, it's like, gosh, there's all kinds of time on your hands. Well, I'm with you. I'm, I'm living, you know, I'm living the dream here, you know? So yeah, by all means, pinch me. And I think we connected as well because <clears throat> early on, because we both were drummers and uh, we had, you know, lots to talk about, uh, lots to talk about our jobs and our techniques and, you know, and we just connected, and obviously both of us love music. Uh, you know, it's just a huge part of our life, and and uh, you know how fortunate we are to, to be able to, not, you know, not only play music, but but really to be able to listen to music uh, on great stuff. And your system, by the way, just you know, I, I'm really jealous of that. That is really over the top there for an office system. I, everyone, I, <laughs> everyone I, should be jealous. I got a way to duplicate that for sure. You know, everyone should be jealous of the system. In fact, I've, I've talked to so many people since I set my system up like that. 
And, you know, the first, uh, the first, uh, uh, response is typically, uh, are you crazy? Why, why would you do something like that? And then after the experience of doing something like that, I'm going, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you set up the very best pair of speakers that you could possibly have at your desktop? Now there are people out there. I've got a friend named Neil Small, uh, who tells me, he goes, David, he says, I can't have anything on at my desk when I'm working. Um, but you know, you see all these YouTube videos and you see, uh, which are actually the qualities get pretty darn good on some of them. You go seriously. And then of course, Cobuzz is, uh, uh, Su Jan Hong, who will be with us in just a little while. She's our, uh, uh, music merchandiser and she is forever going, Oh, did you guys hear this new album or did you, Oh, the new grateful dead. Uh, is up and and I can't believe how good it sounds. So we're always I'm always listening to music. My uh, uh, my managing director uh, Dan uh, does the same thing. We we are listening to music pretty much constantly. If we're doing something really heavy, maybe we may end up turning it off. But there's typically something in the background on the system all the time. Well, I'll tell you, you know, and I'm gonna kind of let the cat out of the bag here <clears throat> for for years and years and years. David has been providing playlists to the industry prior to, 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 to working for, I, I mean, when we were back in our days at, at, at high five eyes, you know, if, uh, if I wanted to hear something that was good, it's going to be great on a particular speaker or, you know, just a great playlist of something that I could carry around when we actually carried CDs. Remember those you had to do the CD pack. <laughs> David was always the resource. You know, so I'm just, this. this uh, I mean, this is perfection for you because, you know, this is something you've always done uh, and it's just so natural. And I think today, in fact, when I see you now at shows, you know, people are, are coming up to you and they're, and they're handing you their, uh, their hard drives. Uh, <laughs> you know, Here, here's my hard drive, man. Can you load that up? You know, and of course you're always obliged and, and we, we sincerely appreciate that. And now you have access to 60 million you know, 60 million records. I mean, come on, you know, it's just, just amazing. So thank you. Yeah, you, you say you have to pinch yourself every time you get up. I, I swear it's the exact same thing with me. I still can't believe how uh, fortunate and blessed I feel to be working for such a, a neat company. Um, I just love these guys. And, you know, the, the cool thing about uh, everybody here is that, that everyone is uh, a, a true music lover uh true really a true music aficionado uh in a lot of ways so i work with a really really good team of people here in the united states although there's not very many of us um we love it so much that it's like you know i'll be working at 11 o'clock at night just doing something i'll you know pop over to uh slack and uh dan is on there and i'm going what is he doing up so late i'm thinking what am I doing? I'm so lucky. But yeah, it's a great job and it is just so much fun and such a, a wonderful opportunity to, to be bringing um, such high quality music to, uh, to, to the industry and to the United States. It's been a real privilege. So thanks for saying so. Andrew, man, we have just, sorry, buddy. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> So uh, I want to I want to bring up uh, a Andrew's system too. You've got quite the. I, I couldn't tell. Uh, I was going to ask you before. Are those eleven A's or? Uh, those are actually Montes, which would be the uh, previous generation. So yeah, bring bring those on, Neith. I want people to see that this is a, a nice little setup. This is a home theater setup, right? Yep, that's. I've always had a passion for home theater. Um, you know, my my first job was at Circuit City, and rest in peace. And. <laughs> Uh, I just kind of fell in love with the concept of it. And that's what, you know, kind of what my career has been based around is just home entertainment. So yeah, that's my, uh, my little 5.2 system. Well, I shouldn't say little, but that's, <laughs> that's my, my 5.2 system. Uh, take, take us through the, uh, take us through the system. Yeah. So um, I've got a pair of Montes in the front with the new focus center channel um, underneath the TV and a pair of uh, Dynamo 1100 X's, uh, for subwoofer on the left and right. And then uh, you can't see it, but behind the couch, I have a pair of motion sixties uh, as my surround channel. So it's a pretty serious system. And, and, you know, my wife and I, we use it all the time for uh, movies, TV shows, music, whatever. Uh, I'm also a gamer, as you can probably tell from that controller and some of the uh, memorabilia behind me, but uh, yeah, it, it's, 
it, whatever content you're listening to, why wouldn't you want to hear it as good as you can? You know, I mean, sure, friend, friends may not have the best soundtrack in the world, but why not hear everything with quality? You know, that, that's my stance on it. And I don't have quite the same system you do on my desktop, but I've got a pair of Motion 35s here that I'm listening to. Uh, for this wonderful little peach tree uh, integrated. I wish I could tell you that I planned this, but I really, <laughs> I, honestly, I didn't. This was this whole thing was just a total mistake. And, and it was a wonderful mistake, but yeah. it was honestly a mistake. Uh, uh, a friend of mine sent me some speakers and he said, hey, can you, can you listen to these and critique them for me? I'm thinking, yeah, sure, no problem. And they got here and I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with these? Because these things must weigh. God, they got to weigh 200, 250 pounds. I mean, they are, it's a lot of speaker. Um, and I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do with them? Well, they were in my office right where my drums are now. Um, yeah. That's where my, well, that's where the system used to be. And I thought, well, I'll just move them. Oh, there's some room in front of my desk. And I got them in front of my desk and I'm going, hold on. I've got <laughs> six feet behind my desk. And I had these little bitty, you remember those little speakers we used to make, the little Peachtree speakers we used to make? Oh, yeah, the yeah. D4s, D5s. I had a pair of the D5s, which are a large bookshelf speaker, and I had them sitting up there. I'm thinking, what the heck? So I just turned these things around, unplugged the D5, plugged them into the uh, Martin Logans, and I didn't even have them set up, but I sat back and I'm going, oh my God, this, <laughs> this is, this is, way way too good for a desktop system nobody deserves this i'm keeping it <laughs> i'd actually <laughs> plan on putting the mark logan's back right over here uh yeah. but after i'd had them here for two or three weeks i'm going i i can't i can't move them away again <laughs> but this is a really weird speaker right i mean this is a super weird speaker my wife walks in the first time and she's looking at them and she's going what are these things? I mean, you can, those aren't speakers. And I'm going, well, yeah, they're, they're speakers, but they're, she goes, but there, there's no speakers in them. They're, it just looks like plastic inside you, that you can see through. And I'm going, okay, baby, I want you to sit down. Cause we're about to, you know, <laughs> yeah. we're about to go through something really cool here. So I set her down in the middle of these things and you guys know what that's like. Oh, I yeah. sit her down in the middle of these things and she's, she just goes, Oh my gosh, I can't believe what that sounds like. So at any rate, I wanted Andrew to, uh, since this is what he does for, you know, a lot of people, including uh, if you called in and you wanted to talk to someone about Martin Logan and, and, and you wanted to know how this stuff worked, there's a real likelihood that you would get uh, thrown over to Andrew, who uh, who is really in charge of a whole lot of the, um, the basic training and putting these things, putting this together as well as product development before they ever happen. So it's, it's really neat to have you on the show. Um, you, we, you actually uh, gave us a little video. Is that, would it be appropriate to pull that up at this point? Uh, yeah, we have a few animations that might be helpful, I think. Yeah. 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 I think uh, we're going to go ahead and, um, uh, start with the uh, the electrostatic, the ELS, uh, uh, Nita, if you can find that one, uh, we'll pull that up. But basically, uh, give us a, a rundown on these things. Yeah, so, uh, and I had a very similar experience, by the way, uh, with my speakers, because that's, besides the way they sound, that's one of my favorite things is how unique and special they look, because people look at them and go, what in the heck is this thing? Um, so essentially what, an electrostatic speaker or ESL is, is a thin film that's basically suspended between two metal panels that we call the stators. Uh, and what happens is the stator on the front and back of that film, they alternate from positive to negative. So if the front side is positive, then the back side is negative and vice versa. And the, the film is always positively charged. So it's attracted to and repelled from each of those stators. So it's being pushed and pulled simultaneously. And the they basically flip flop and it pushes and pulls that film back and forth. Um, so what's actually moving the air and creating sound is this extremely thin film diaphragm that actually weighs less than the air that it displaces. And that's what's producing the sound. So this animation is showing you that because of that extreme light weight, there's nothing there to color the sound or distort the sound in any way, it basically reproduces exactly what it's being told to do. 
um, so much so that uh, a lot of the recording uh, microphones used in studios are also electrostatic. They're just being used on the recording side. We're using it on the playback side. Uh, and it's just an, an amazing experience. And they look unlike anything else in the world because most of the speaker, you can actually just see right through it. So it's a really, really cool product. I still remember the very first time uh, I ever heard these speakers. Um, I had uh, uh, gone to the CES show and they were, uh, Gail Sanders, the original owner of the company had set up, uh, I can't even remember the model number, but that was just a huge electrostatic speaker. What? No subs. So maybe the CLS maybe, or the CLS. That's exactly what it was. It was the CLS. Yeah. And so we're sitting there listening to these things. And I remember listening to them with my buyer, Walter Lederman, and we're sitting there and we're, we're, we're they put the speakers on and first off, you could, you see right through them, right? It's really right. cool, but I've got my eyes closed. I mean, I am interested in what these things sound like. I, I, I really don't care at this point what they look like but I'm closing my eyes and, and it's just a big wall of sound. It was like things were placed in space where they would normally be. Um, obviously that's a, um, 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 uh, you know, part of the, of the design. But uh, I looked at Walter and I said, it's the most transparent thing I've ever heard in my life. And to this day, I, no pun intended. They are the most transparent things that I've, that I've ever heard. Yeah, it, very much so. Uh, you know, and when we released Neolith uh, years ago, we won uh, the Absolute Sounds Product of the Year Award. And that was a very, very proud moment for us. And I remember one of the quotes more or less was just saying, this is the most high resolution speaker that I've ever heard in my life. And I was like, yeah, that's that's about right. That's the right experience because there's nothing there to obscure any details. You hear everything. We've got a really good question. Um here uh, on the bottom of the screen that I think that would be interesting to uh, to talk about a little bit because really they are similar um, uh, technologies but there's a question here could you compare electrostatic yeah. electrostatic speakers with rhythm ribbon or quasi ribbon speakers such as the magnapan I had a pair of Maggie's uh, before I got these guys um, in fact it was one of my first speakers I had a pair of the um, Timpani threes. That was one of my bit, my, the first speakers that I ever had, the first high end speaker that I ever had. That's actually when I fell in love with panel speakers. But why don't, why don't, Andrew, why don't you go ahead sure. and, and talk about that a bit? Yeah. So they're, they're similar in that they are thin film technologies, but that's kind of where the similarities end. Um, electrostatic, for one, uh, is a larger piece of film. Um, so you can kind of see from the images we've shown that. They're generally uh, multiple feet high by, uh, you know, at least a foot wide or so roughly. Uh, so there's a lot more surface area there, but there's also no voice coil of any kind present in there. Um, and there's a lot, that thin film itself is a much lighter weight. Um, in the case of a planar magnetic like Magnapan, which is where they get their name, um, it, it's a lighter weight film than that. It's a much more efficient technology um, and we can typically get better frequency response out of it. Um, not really great for bass, which is why we pursued the uh, hybrid design that we're known for, where we use a conventional woofer to handle the bass frequencies and an electrostatic film to handle everything else. Uh, but that's that's where the comparisons are. It's, it's the lightest weight speaker technology out there. Uh, it is a true line source and it's a true dipole. Uh, as you can kind of see, we're, we're open on the front and back. So uh, there's a lot of benefits, um, but that's really where the similarities end is they are all thin films, but very different in how they, they operate and their performance capabilities. And they're quite gorgeous as well. Here's how I describe um, if I were a Martin Logan guy, this is the way I would describe them. When I hit one of my symbols, it doesn't, the radiation pattern of that symbol isn't uh, 180 degrees or 90 yeah. degrees. It's 360 degrees. When I hit that cymbal, sound happens all around. When you play guitar, it's exactly the same. You've got a 360 degree uh, uh, sound stage that are, or you're producing, uh, you're moving air 360 degrees. That's the way musical instruments work. That's the way our voices work. That's just the way sound works in general, which is uh, to me a really, really 
um, cool way to make a pair of speakers if you've got the technology. But you guys actually had some very tough times when you first started with this technology. Do you know about that, Andrew? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, there were, a lot of, there were a lot of myths that, yeah, that, yeah. There's a ton of myths. But one thing to remember, I think one thing that, and I, and I love the description that you used there, but if you think about a microphone, you know, and, and Andrew touched on it uh, a bit ago, you know, there's a, it, it's electrostatic, and there's a piece of film there. And we are basically, that's the input, we're basically the output of that. It's, that film represents that. So there's really nothing in between. And so we really, our, our job is really easy is to produce. We don't have to fix anything exactly as as it was recorded and uh the transparency uh and the realism i guess uh in in, in some cases you know it, it's 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 very very precise and very accurate uh and, but you know just it's the output of of the microphone basically and uh makes it really really truly unique uh um, and obviously uh, is is why you have the transparency and the articulation that you would have from a from a panel uh effortless so we said so to say yep. electrostatics used to be so and really they are to a large degree now uh esoteric i mean they're, they're really out there technology and martin logan really is the only company that has brought the electrostatic technology to in my mind uh down to a level that uh, normal people buy these things, not people that have got to be um, uh, audiophiles or that that kind of designation, uh, just people who love music. So I'm really, really pleased to see that some company uh, came out with electrostatic speakers sort of for the normal person, not that there are any less technology in them, but you guys certainly figured out how to, to get these yeah. things mass produced. Yeah, we're, we're problem solvers. You know, that's kind of how the company started was, you know, there were electrostats back in the fifties that were out, but they had some limitations. They didn't have a, a wide range of playback. They were very, very directional. They were unreliable. So, you know, if you could live with all of their faults, they were fantastic. So, and also you had like also back in those days, because I mean, I remember some of these speakers that you, if you didn't put the right amplifier on these things, you're looking at letting the smoke out of your amplifier, oh, yeah. which they never yeah. sound as good afterwards. Right? <laughs> but it, they, they're easy to drive. These things Very are actually super easy to drive. So instead of having to use like a, you know, in the old days, like a, 100 watt mono block amplifier that would almost push a dead short. You could push these things with like a, you know, Denon receiver these days. Yeah. And that's, that's just what we've been working on for a long time. You know, we wanted to make them easier to drive, easier to live with. We wanted to increase their dispersion. So more people in the house could enjoy them at any given time and just kind of make it the electrostatic speaker for everyone. Uh, and yeah, you're right. They're incredibly easy to drive because when we design them, we hook it up to anything from just a, a basic AV receiver you can find on the shelf anywhere to the top of the line electronics and everything in between. Because uh, we don't want people to have to jump through a bunch of hoops just to enjoy them. Uh, you know, they're very, very easy speakers to live with. Um, but like Russell said, there's a whole lot of myths out there that aren't true anymore and haven't been for a long time. Uh, you know, they're really uh, very easy products to live with and enjoy. Awesome. Awesome. Great, great stuff. Well, listen, we have got, and I think she's here. I'm hoping she is. We have got, uh, we're going to take a little break from, uh, from Russell and Andrew guys. Thank you so much for being here. And, um, uh, we are going to bring in our music merchandiser. Her name is Sujan Hong and she is, awesome we all love sujan she's got this just unbelievable knowledge of music and um and uh she she tells us about the new releases and stuff that are coming out uh every week she she's she we had this thursday meeting and and she's telling us all about the music that's going to be coming out the next day on friday um so i had asked sujan to start joining us in our in our uh, meetings uh, in our uh, Thursday afternoon live uh, sessions with Cobuzz, and she said, "Yeah, sure, I'll I'll be glad to do that." So, uh, Neetha, I'm hoping is Su uh, or Dan is Sujan in? I'm here. 
Sujan, how are you doing? I'm doing well, David. How Good are to you? see you as always. You too. How's uh, how's life treating you with the uh, with the the uh, quarantine? You still guys, you still in the in the middle of it, huh? Uh, we're in the thick of it. We've got school uh, starting right around the corner, so that'll be fun. <laughs> Sujan has a, a couple of uh, couple of uh, kids, couple of uh, boys really, really neat, uh, young men. And, uh, and when I first met them, I, I, you know, what are, what are their names? Can you, can you tell us, Sujan? Uh, sure. They are, uh, I've got twin boys and they are called Otis and Sam. <laughs> How cool is that? Well, like I said, Sujan is our music person and she lives and breathes music, uh, just like the rest of us. And now she's uh, made her boys live, breathe in music as well because they have got quite the namesake. So, Sujan, why don't you take it away and let us know what uh, what we can what we can expect tomorrow? Thank you very much for joining us, by the way. Cool. Yeah. Well, we have another great week of releases. It's like you know, next week is uh, the Labor Day weekend, I guess. So I think everyone's just trying to cram it into uh, tomorrow, and we're going to start off with our album of the week, which is Gregory Porter's All Rise, and we're going to have the deluxe edition. Um, so All Rise is the sixth studio album from Gregory Porter, and it blends jazz and soul and pop and gospel. Um, his previous record was a tribute to his idol, Nat King Cole, but here Porter returns to singing his own songs. Um, you know, he's got his smooth, easygoing baritone, and um, it's boosted by horns, uh, a 10-person choir, and the London Symphony Orchestra strings. Uh, these are, you know, deeply personal songs. They're pulling from his upbringing to current racial inequalities, uh, but they're all, like, buoyed by this sense of love and hope and light. Um, you know, it just fills you with, you know, a, a lot of light when you're listening to this. Um, and this is coming out on Blue Note Records in 2496. Next up, we have Angel Olsen's Whole New Mess. Um, and this is a surprise-ish new album from Angel Olsen. It was just announced about a month ago. She released her previous album, All Mirrors, last October. And Whole New Mess is a collection of, um, you know, different interpretations and recordings of the songs that appear on that album. But here, they're more spare and stripped down. Um, in some cases, it's the demo versions. Um, all these recordings predate the All Mirrors versions. Um, Whole New Mess was recorded in Washington State in a church turned into a recording studio. And there's no backing band here, so you get Olsen's voice like front and center. It's echoing throughout as she works her way through um, basically heartbreak. Um, it's a really intimate look into a songwriter's process. And then third, we have... Oh, sorry, that's coming out on Jag Jaguar in 24-44-1. Uh, third, we have Alan Brofman, The Fire Still Burns. Um, Alan Brofman is a saxophonist, flautist, composer, who up until now had just released one album called Valley of Search in 1975. Um, and that was a live recording from a live work loft space on Canal Street in downtown New York uh, that he shared with other folks in the New York free jazz scene. It was long out of print, um, probably largely forgotten, but in 2018, it was reissued by his nephew. And so 45 years after that debut, we have uh, Brofman's follow-up, The Fire Still Burns. Uh, it covers a diverse cross-section of styles, whether it's like free and improvisational or more melodic. Um, he's even joined by one of the same players from his debut, the uh, pianist uh, Cooper Moore. Um, and we also have this exclusive playlist that's going to be live tomorrow where Brofman walks us through uh, a dozen albums that influenced him and his music. Uh, and I'll give you a preview of one of the albums. It's uh, Don Cherry's Complete Communion, which was purchased for him when he was a kid by his mother uh, when he was home sick one day from school. Um, you know, his mom wanted to make him feel better and was like, what can I get you? And uh, she came home with this Don Cherry album. So it's a great story. And there are 11 other great stories. And then finally, we have Elliot Smith's. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting to tell you what the uh, the resolution is. That one's coming out on Valley of Search in twenty four ninety six. And then finally, we have Elliot Smith's self titled album. 
Um, and this is the 25th anniversary edition of the second solo album from the singer songwriter um, who died in 2003 when he was just 33 years old. It's been remastered from the original source tapes, um, source material by Larry Crane, who many of you may know is the owner of Jackpot Recording Studio in Portland, Oregon. Uh, he's also the founder of the great magazine Tape Op. Um, he's also the archivist for the Elliott Smith estate. So, um, you know, they, they got the best person to put this together. Um, the songs here are mostly Smith and his acoustic guitar. You know, there's some additional instruments and voices here and there. But uh, the brightness and the fullness of these remasters, like it creates an even greater contrast with the overall like dark and vulnerable, vulnerable nature of uh, the songs on this album. Uh, so this was originally released by the great uh, indie label Kill Rock Stars out of Olympia, Washington in 1995. And they're also behind this wonderful reissue. It's coming out in 2496. And it also it includes a live performance from 1994, which is thought to be his first performance as a solo artist. So um, hope you guys check these out um, and enjoy the week of music. So Jan, that's, um, thank you so much. I'll, I'll, I always get so much uh, out of your, out of your conversations with us. I can't wait to listen to some of these. I don't know if you noticed last week after you had done, or was it last week? It was, were you here last week or was it the week before? I think you was here last week. Yeah, it was last week. Yeah. Uh, last week after the uh, after your portion of the show, uh, we started getting a lot of feedback on the records that you were that you had mentioned. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but the people in streaming music matters. I were, didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks. These, I, I love this. Uh, I love this section. Hey, Sujan, um, you were talking a lot about resolutions, which, you know me, I mean, I, honestly, I don't care. I just want it to sound right. But as far as resolutions go, if you had to put a percentage on the amount of high resolution versus, say, 1644 we're getting every week, would, what percentage would you just guesstimate that to be? Or have you even looked? I mean, I don't know if I could give you a, an actual number, but what I can say is that we're getting more and more content in 24-bit. Um, certain genres that maybe had less of a high res presence. Um, you see those titles coming in now kind of as a standard. You see certain labels just continuing to deliver in high res. Um, so I like to kind of consider it that way. It seems like there's more and more. I don't know what that number actually turn, you know, would, would, would amount to be, but um, it seems like a pretty good percentage. Yeah, yeah. And I am, uh, as we were talking with uh, Bill Schnee last week, it's like the, the just the the um, the uh, skill level of recording engineers over the last three to five years has totally blown me away. Uh, we're getting so much stuff that just sounds great, not just like releases, re-releases like the tool catalog and that kind of thing. I'm talking about brand new stuff that's just being recorded those recordings to me right now are better as a whole than they've ever been so so jan we'll check out these uh we'll check out these uh um these albums that you've uh, recommended and we'll be looking forward to at least on the show we'll be see, uh, seeing you uh next week derek hughes is going great presentation so jan thanks do you also put the playlist together? Good question. That is a good question. Uh, and the answer is some of them. We have a team, what's called the musical committee. Um, you know, it's basically myself and colleagues in Europe and France. Um, and, you know, we're always collaborating. So some of the playlists are coming out of France. They're kind of tweaked for a U.S. audience by me. Um, and then sometimes we have, um, you know, outside curators putting together playlists for us. So uh, there are a number of different people who are um, doing the work. So there's a lot of music out there. Thanks again, Sujan. And uh, I, we will be talking to you tomorrow at our Friday meeting. All right. Take care, David. Take care now. See ya. All right, everybody. We're going to, we're going to bring back uh, Russell and, um, and Andrew, ah, oh, got a little bit of a different, uh, got a little bit of a different angle with them now. Uh, Andrew, yes. So, buddy, you got some more to tell us because 
Martin Logan doesn't only build uh, electrostatic speakers. You guys build traditional speakers as well. That is correct. Um, motion 40s. Yeah. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit? Or I said more. So that's what I've got. You The motion series. Um, tell us a little bit about those. If yeah. You, so, uh, you know, we're most well known and originally started for the electrostat technology. But, you know, at some point it, it we had to expand our audience uh, because there's certain things electrostats can't do. Um, they don't shrink down very well. So uh, things like bookshelves or as small compact speakers or in-wall speakers became more popular, we really had to look elsewhere. Um, you know, and first and foremost, we just make great sounding stuff, you know, so it, regardless of what technology we're using, it sounds awesome. So uh, the motion series was born from a need to expand our offerings to a more traditional price point and a more traditional style. So, uh, you know, I've got motion bookshelves right here. I've got motion products in my home theater. Uh, there's just some times where those styles of products or those prices of products just make more sense. So uh, we voice them to work with our electrostatics. Um, you know, they use a folded motion tweeter, which you can think of kind of like a miniaturized electrostat. They work a little differently, but the benefits are the same. Extremely lightweight. They have controlled dispersion. Uh, you know, they have just a, a huge amount of detail and performance. So, you know, a lot of the magic of our products are based in thin film technology, not just electrostatic. So uh, we have that in our arsenal as well. And they, they sound awesome. They're every bit a Martin Logan, just like our electrostats. Yeah, I totally agree. The uh, the tweeter is 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 fantastic. That would have been, to me, the hardest part to even start to um, to try to emulate with a with a standard driver. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, our ears are most sensitive in that high frequency kind of mid you know mid range area, and getting those details right just you know you start hearing things you've never heard before that other speakers just obscure. Um, so the motion series is, is just awesome. It really is more approachable for a lot of, uh, people. Uh, and, and sometimes those form factors just work better in that space than an electrostat, you know, it's not for everybody. So that's why we've expanded our offerings to, uh, really let everybody be uh, a Martin Logan fan, you know, uh, wh wherever you need to put a speaker, we have one for you. That sounds absolutely incredible. Yeah. I think Nita just pulled up a pair of the, uh, uh, the big guys, uh, uh, Nita, if you've got that ready, uh, throw that on screen, if you would. The sixties. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's a pair of the, um, uh, it's a definitely a big pair of the, uh, the motion speakers, but yeah, I've got mine in, um, it's like a gloss, uh, red. Yeah. Uh, and it, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Um, yep. And we've got new finishes now that we came out with last year too. They look awesome. So what I know that you guys are making those and then you're also making, um, you're also making, uh, forget about the picture, Nathan, uh, but you're also making uh, a line of architectural speakers that I heard <laughs> at the last CD that we were able to go to. Oh man, that was a good time for sure. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Custom install products are just becoming so much more popular as people are trying to save the space and just have, you know, a nice clean aesthetic. So we, we don't want people to have to compromise performance when they make that design choice. So we came out with a line called Masterpiece. Uh, so we have Masterpiece ESL, which are electrostats. And then we have Masterpiece CI, the custom install products. And they are a no holds barred let's build the best sounding stuff that we can that fits inside of a stud, you know, inside, inside your wall. Uh, and they are just awesome. You know, we have several different models ranging from, uh, you know, around $2,000, but all the way up to about $20,000. And that thing is just unreal. Uh, right. If you look at st standard uh, in wall speakers, they're typically, yeah. uh, they're typically made because just like you said, you just don't have a room for them, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of people that are actually making these things for high performance. And these, yeah. the, when I heard them, I can't even remember what you had them push with, but they, I, re I do remember it was a lot of power. Yeah. And they were a full Anthem stack in that home theater. It was that's uh, what it, it was. was. <laughs> With the big Anthem amplifiers, right? Yeah, we snuck it back in there after hours and listened to the new Tool album because they came out, uh, that new album came out, I think, uh, the same week of Cedia. 
So we went back in there and just blasted it all night. And it was, uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a very memorable moment for sure. It was a good time. Yeah. We, uh, in fact, we're going to talk about your playlist in just a second because it's a really, really good playlist. And, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, uh, uh, Martin Logan, like a lot of our partners have got, uh, have got playlists, uh, on Cobuzz. So if you search Martin Logan, uh, on Cobuzz, uh, you'll be able to just come up with a playlist. Just uh, scroll to the very bottom where it says playlists, and then that's where it'll be. But uh, you guys, I'm I'm guessing that some of the stuff on this playlist was was some of the stuff that you were like, you know, cranking out to the max, huh? A little bit, yeah. You could, yeah, we've got a little bit of everything on here from, you know, Billie Eilish, Chris Stapleton to Tool, which, uh, you know a lot of times people will pigeonhole brands of, okay, well, if you like jazz buy this speaker and if you like classical buy this speaker and we don't believe in that nonsense, you know, we, yeah, believe- because you know why, because that's just BS. That does. It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, you know, if you design an accurate speaker, it has no idea what's running through it. It's just going to be accurate. So, you know, I play video games a lot and you know what, those sounds that are fake come just sound awesome. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're feeding it. So yeah, a lot of those tool songs in there are from, from us metal fans that are uh, into that sort of stuff, but there's anything, all sorts of genres represented on here. Um, we tried to avoid some of the uh, the show favorites that people repeat thousands of times. So we wanted to expose people to uh, a little, little more variety here. So we've got all kinds of uh, cool stuff on here for sure. Yeah. So I was noticing the, uh, the Elton John, which you wouldn't think you're going well, I mean, you know, that's a that that'll be pretty cool. But first off, it's not like one of the the hits or anything. But right. I I put that on. I I try to listen to the playlist before I get on, uh, and yeah. I put that on, and and I'm going, you are kidding that that thing sounds so incredibly good. Yep. Yeah, but there's a few in there that you're not expecting to be in there, right? That are are just fantastic. So yeah, you guys. Uh, um, Dan just put the, uh, Cobas, uh, link to the Martin Logan playlist. If you don't happen to be a member of Cobas, uh, yet we call you a pre Cobas, uh, you can still listen to all this stuff for free. Uh, you can just, uh, go on and sign up for like a 30 day free trial. And then you could, uh, find out yourselves, uh, what, uh, what high resolution sounds like on your system. But speaking of which, guys, you're, you've been listening to Cobuzz now for, gosh, I, I guess it's been almost two years now, hasn't it? Yeah. For both while. you guys. So, what do you think about the? Uh, what do you think about high res being offered uh, just over the airways? Oh, it! I never thought we'd ever see it. To be honest, <laughs> it's a, a dream come true for me because if you care about quality, this is stuff you've tried to get through you know, downloading or whatever method and oh my gosh, now that you can just type in what you're looking for and find it. How cool is that? I mean, it's just incredible. I think what's awesome is, uh, is listening to music that you've heard elsewhere. And, you know, cause we all do that. And, and, you know, we, we, and I can stay up on it and I want to hear something that I didn't hear. And, you know, that, that now I can hear in high res that I couldn't hear in high res before. And of course, you know, it's, Nobody has CDs anymore. Nobody has, well, I don't have albums, but just the cool thing about being able to access all my favorite music on in high res is just, you know, some nights my wife comes up and I'm listening to music and she goes, it's four in the morning. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I never, I never, I never heard that before. <laughs> I never heard that part. The vocals are, oh my God, wow. Did you hear that in the background there? So it's, you know, it's, just the discovery part, uh, you know, and being able to have that, you know, have that in your hand, have access to it. And you, it's just, you know, it's just amazing. I mean, it's uh, uh, it's just one of those technologies that, you know, we have fell in love with and now we can't live without. You just can't imagine without it's it. Incredible. If, if I would have had this, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago selling speakers, oh my gosh, because used to be whatever you had in your CD case is what you could play. And now it's just, oh, okay, you want to hear that? Awesome. How about this in high res or a live version, acoustic version? It's just 
oh my gosh, dream come true. Listen to anything you want at any time in the best quality. Forget it. This is it's it's amazing. Yeah, I've got. I had. I have to laugh at 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 Russell with the whole. Uh, you know, at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, not because I'm laughing at you. I'm laughing with you, my brother. We. My, I've had the exact same conversation with my wife when she gets up to use the restroom because she gets up at four thirty, and she it'll be like three o'clock in the morning. Sometimes and she'll walk in going, "What are you doing?" I'm going. Well, I I was on Rune. And it took me down this rabbit hole. And then the <laughs> rabbit hole took me down three more rabbit holes. And it's like, yeah, I told one of my friends, he was asking me about Rune the other day. And I'm going, uh, he's going, you know, what can you tell me about it? I'm going, it just makes everything just so much totally more enjoyable than just, just not having it. Um, but the problem is, is if you've got Rune and Cobuzz and you're in bed before three o'clock in the morning, you're just not doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> how can you go to bed because you just keep going uh, I was just doing the same thing last night and finally at like 1 o'clock in the morning I'm, I press on play Wish you, uh, uh, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd oh yeah yeah. and you know you start listening to that I, I just wanted to listen to the first of it right I wasn't gonna and so I sit back in my chair I just got this new chair downstairs and I sit back in my chair and it's like, before I know it, the whole darn thing is over. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? I've got this live stream today. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be so tired. I'm not going to be able to talk to these guys, but how can you not do it? Right. <laughs> yeah. and we've got, uh, of great recordings. And, uh, you know, and what you discover on great recordings, obviously, you know, there's artists behind those great recordings and their technique and recording, but you know, it's so revealing when you have high resolution and you even admire those artists and those recording engineers even more, you know, than, than, than you had because you discover so many things that so many uh, neat techniques and, and are and things that they do that you go, wow, man, I never heard that. I never, you yeah. know, I had no idea they were doing that. I had no idea. I mean, obviously we all listen to Donald Fagan and, you know, people uh, or, and we, we listen to it. And, and it's it in high res. It's it's totally different, you know. Even though it's the same recording material, but it's totally different. You can really identify with, with just how talented all, all these people are. You know, you, you know, we had their injur that we had their uh, recording engineer and producer on last I week, really that. <laughs> and that was just so much fun talking to this guy, Bill Schnee, about uh, about the way he actually does recordings. I loved it to really talk a little bit more about that, but we should probably talk about um, what you guys have got going over the next little bit. What, anything, uh, anything new coming out from Martin Logan that always get know, this question. <laughs> we, well, we don't have any, we don't have any shows coming up. Right. So it's like, if you were doing yeah. a show like in a month or two months, what would you be, what would you guys be, uh, be showing off? I, I don't think we're quite ready to talk about that yet. Um, uh, but there, there is a bunch of stuff coming. Um, you know, we, we've always kind of responded in the past that we're always working on new stuff. And yes, that, that is true. Um, uh, you know, our teams are always working on something. There's never, there's never rest, but, uh, there is some stuff coming. Um, you know, at CDL last year, we announced, uh, our new distribution amplifier, which is out now. And we announced uh, the Masterpiece CI that we talked about, uh, but there's more. There's more to come in that in that realm. Uh, so yeah, has the, has the COVID thing, has the whole pandemic, has that helped focus the company from a manufacturing and a development standpoint, or were you kind you guys kind of just doing this anyway? It it's a it's a double edged sword. There's projects that have been in the works for. Uh, years that have definitely gotten delayed because of all this because you know basically everything stopped for at least a couple months there uh but yeah it, it allows us to refocus on okay well we can't really tackle as many things as we once could uh so what's really the priority what do people really need and really want and, and so yeah it's 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 made some things take a lot longer than intended but it's also allowed us uh, a, a kind of a forced our hand to really take a look at, okay, well, we can't do everything at once. So what's really the priority here? Um, so we've got a really, really uh, great plan uh, over the next few years of some very exciting stuff. And, uh, you know, we can't, 
we can't wait to uh, get it out there. But I can't really comment on when because no there's problem. things outside our control that uh, we'll uh, we'll 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 keep uh, we'll keep in touch and then we'll we'll yeah, see absolutely. it when we see it. You know, you, really, I'm sorry. You know, we played the 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 masterpiece uh, in wall uh, a year before we actually showed what it was. Yeah, actually, and yeah. a lot of people thought that we had put the neolith behind behind the wall, and you know. Yeah. That was it the, sound, I mean, it sounds incredible. We went a whole year, and Andrew can attest it. We went a whole year with people literally, you know, beat our door, wanted to know what that was. They wanted, you know, people wanted to buy it right away. And, and of course, we yeah. couldn't go because, you know, we hadn't finished it. And, you know, it was a, it's still in somewhat a prototype state, but but it was so impactful. You know, the, the thing about, you know, obviously, uh, uh, a lot of people are spending a lot of time at home. And, you know, and, and uh, we have been fortunate to benefit from that because people you know, are buying our speakers and listening to our speakers and, you know, and supporting our brand. So we really appreciate, you know, everybody out there doing that. And uh, it's really uh, it's really helped us uh, you know, get through uh, this, this time period. So uh, things are good. You support your brand in so many ways, uh, so many positive ways. But one of the ways that, you know, of course, I'm the most interested in Russell and I actually ran into each other. I guess it was a, a couple of years ago at the NAM show. Uh, this is the big musical instrument show and you see uh, hundreds of musical stars. I got to meet uh, Skunk Baxter and Nancy Wilson and Scott Page. He's the saxophone player for Pink Floyd. You just end up hanging out with these guys. I had the time of my life. But at that time, I think you were starting a program with Martin Logan that I found absolutely fascinating. Can you can you talk a little bit about that, Russell? Absolutely. We uh, uh, we, we started the series, video series car artist, artist in motion, and uh, no pun intended there, motion. Uh, but uh, and we were able to connect with uh, the the guys who who, who were the, uh, the 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 backup drummer, backup bass player for really the, uh, the, the drummer with Eric Clapton and uh, Sonny Emery, uh, the bass player, Sam Sims, who's played with, well, actually somebody says all of the Jacksons, Michael Jackson, whatnot. And, uh, and also the, uh, the bass player with the war on drugs and, and uh, a gentleman who invented an instrument. But the cool thing is, is that, you know, what we were looking for is to, uh, Obviously, we have a passion for music, and we were looking for artists that also uh, had a passion for music, but a passion for making music. And we wanted that to, uh, because that marriage obviously is is so important. And they obviously were admirers of the brand, but we really wanted to expose, you know, all the hard work and the heart and the dedication that goes into making music. Uh, and on our end, you know, all of the hard work and dedication that goes into, you know, develop or delivering. You know that, and uh, it it really turned into just something that was really spectacular. We learned a lot. We we obviously uh, became fans, immediate fans of these guys, and, and all the hard work that they did. And you know, one of the comments that, that they made, uh, and we tried not to make this a you know a, a, I guess a commercial endorsement of some sort. But one of the things that I heard from them is, uh, especially uh, was was that sounds like me when they listen to to our speakers. And and to me, that's a just a huge accolade when an artist says, "Hey, that sounds like me." Yeah, yeah. Okay. That that's one thing for a saxophone player or an acoustic guitar player to say. But one of these guys we're talking about is Sonny Emery. This guy hits drums harder than any, but consistently harder than anybody I know. I mean, he's a total machine, right? If you guys don't know who Sonny Emery is. Uh, look up Crusaders, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Jeff Lorber. Uh, who else, uh, Russell? I mean, the guys, but everybody wants to play with Sonny. He's played with everyone. You know, Bob James. Uh, right, yeah. Right. The B-52s. I mean, you know, there's he's such a, such a, uh, Lee Rittenauer, such a, right. uh, Stanley Clark, such a, uh, just. So he plays with all of these guys, and Sonny is one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest endorsers of Martin Logan. When you could take a drum set like, like, Sonny play, plays, which is very, very hard. However, he, he's just as um, delicate as he is hard. There is so much small stuff going on when this guy plays that you just pick up 
you pick up every single thing the guy does. The re the reason I know that is because I recorded him the last time. Actually, it was when you and I were together when he was with Lee Rittenauer. I was recording him with those new panel new panel microphones from uh, Sonic Presence, and um, I could. And then I got to play them back. And the just the delicacy of the stuff he does within this power uh, really makes uh, uh, really just makes Sonny who he is. But to have someone like that that does and can invoke that kind of a power on a set of drums to go, well, these are the speakers of my choice. That's really saying something to me. He's yeah, he's a phenomenal drummer. He's probably one of the best drummers, uh, and he's such uh, a student of drumming, you know, as, you know, it, it, it's, <clears throat> you know, he doesn't take anything for granted. Uh, when you see him uh, rehearse before a show or practice before a show, you know, it, it's, it's really intense. He's yeah. been that way since he was a kid though. Right. I mean, we've, uh, <clears throat> Russell really knows Sonny. Well, I know Sonny just from, he, he grew up around this area and he played so much in Atlanta. Uh, I got to see him a, a whole lot. And, uh, He's just one of these guys you just sit there and and, and just drop your jaw, uh, but yeah, I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about that program because that's uh, hopefully when things get going again, you'll pick that that project back up. Yeah, all those guys were really good, great to work with. They were uh, you know just, just stars in their own rights, and and you know it's cool as some of the stories that you you know that you're able to talk about with them about some of the artists that they play for and. And how intense Sam Sam's playing with Michael Jackson. If you talk to him about playing with Michael, and he'll tell you that uh, that Michael was uh, probably the most intense artist that he's ever had to play with. And uh, you know, and, uh, and and obviously, uh, you know, it shows in the music. Uh, but you know, then he talks about some of the jazz greats that you know, he played along with. You know, Joe Sample, and he talks about how Joe Sample would literally in the middle of a show would stop playing. Tell him to stop and start over. You know, because he, just, he heard something he didn't like, and you know, it's just a uh, just it's incredible how dedicated and uh, you know how proficient these guys are. And we try to express that through our speakers. You know, we we, we feel the same way. We want to protect that art. And uh, when you listen to our speakers, you know that that we want to make sure that you hear, you know, Sonny the way that he wants you to hear him. And uh, that's what we try to do. So. That is like a mirror image of, of our philosophy as well. We want you to hear what the artist, uh, what the artist intended. And, and it really, really is getting more and more possible these days as time goes along and recording um, uh, has more technology behind it. Uh, we are absolutely finding that right now the best recordings collectively that have ever been made in the world are being made right now. Uh, and sometimes on just like a little DAW in somebody's basement, uh, we, we're, we're getting some just fantastic technology. And so the source is improving, the playback systems are improving and people are going, well, you know, has audio really improved in the last 10 or 15 or 20 years? And, and, and my answer every single time is, uh, yeah, like big time, uh, Things do continue to, to 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 improve, and you guys certainly uh, keep up with it with the uh, with the motions and the uh, and the electrostats and your and your architectural stuff. So, very much wishing you the very uh, the very best during the rest of this uh, pandemic, and and uh, wishing you the best uh, afterwards as well. Well, thank you, thank you, thank very you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah, any uh, any last minute thoughts you guys want to? You know, I'm going to send you my hard drive. I'm looking for a new playlist. <laughs> yeah, some more Dave's Faves playlists. <laughs> hey, man. There are, uh, my new one is called Wow 2, and, I, and I've just been adding to that one for about six months now. That one's also on, uh, that one's also on Cobuzz. But that one is my acid test. This is the one that you, that you pull up when you're going, if you need to know if your system is performing right, but you don't want to pull it up if you've got kind of a, wimpy system because it'll it'll eat the system up it's called wow too and uh yeah search it for us but guys thank you so much for joining us uh martin logan thank you for producing such wonderful speakers i love mine and can't imagine not having these big behemoths right here in front of me ever so yeah. guys really appreciate it
Thank you. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. We'll uh, we'll be talking to you soon, and uh, everybody check out uh, Martin Logan on the uh, internet and on their uh, social pages. Take care, guys. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.